Welcome to The Advocate, where thought-provoking topics are discussed with no holds barred, here on PLOS TV Africa. We basically call a spade by its name. Today, all the advocates are in one voice against bullying. Famous American actress Madeleine Pesch said, the people who are bullying you, they're insecure about who they are, and that's why they're bullying you. It never has to do with the person they're bullying. They desperately want to be loved and be accepted, and they go out of their way to make people feel unaccepted so that they're not alone. I am talking about the duty of care within the educational system. Helen focuses on the responsibilities of parents, schools, and the government. Elijah is looking at correcting a failed system through the educational environment. Eniton is asking if the child has any rights, and Tolu is calling for home training and social security of the children. Sit back, and after this break, we'll be here to dissect it all. Stay with us. Bullying and the duty of care within the education system. This past week has been one of tragedy upon tragedy in relation to the care of our children within the educational system. Two particular cases have summed up my fears about my own children and what could happen to them in school. First is the alleged murder of Sylvester Oromoni at Doan College, who had been the victim of ongoing bullying until he was eventually brutalized, resulting in his death. The second of a school which supposedly carries out inclusive education, yet keeps its special needs students in a separate room using actual physical restraints and electroshock treatment on them. These are just two cases and what we know must be many more. Having two children, one a boy who looks mixed, mixed race, has a gentle and kind spirit, as well as a daughter with Down syndrome. I worry about the possibility of them being bullied. At home, I do my part to teach my son to stand up for himself and always to inform his teacher or grown up in school if any incident happens and most importantly to always tell me that if anyone threatens him if he speaks up that still he should immediately tell a member of staff at school and me as soon as he gets home even if they threaten him his sister or myself with physical harm with a daughter who has learning delays it is harder to do we play scenarios and teach her to shout, run, and defend herself. But the comprehension for something like this just isn't there yet. So I do the work at home. But what happens at school? When we hand over our precious ones, the school is responsible for them at all times during those school hours. If something happens, there should be immediate protocols to follow. But who is monitoring and regulating the schools? Honestly, if private schools are left to regulate themselves, as they currently are, there is very little hope of anything changing. If governments are not willing to regulate fees exploitation, something I believe is a lot easier to tackle, why would they regulate duty of care protocols? I especially worry for my special needs daughter because students with disabilities are two to three times more likely to be bullied and up to six times more likely to experience physical violence than their neurotypical peers. Children with learning disabilities are two and a half times more likely to suffer sexual abuse and sexually based violence than their peers without learning disabilities. In my eye, it is past time of talking. Now is the time to rally and go beyond the knee-jerk emotions. We must push our elected officials and those in government to tighten existing laws and create better ones to tackle regulation, as our children are not safe in schools. This is a human rights issue. It goes beyond posting on social media. We must petition state and federal legislature. We must make our physical presence known about this issue and we must make sure of regulation and enforcement of education institutions and those who work within them. We must act. And we must act now. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I'll say two things. First thing is, you know, I think it's a good time to give a minute silence for Sylvester, mm -hmm. you know. Because um, if you think about it, second is throughout history. Uh, there were people who have started a re revolution. Think about Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. I said no. Think about um, Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. right? 
think about George Floyd, mm -hmm. okay? And I think Sylvester was just at George Floyd, okay. you know. Um, this issue didn't start today, it didn't start last week. You know, but at some point, one person would say no. Unfortunately, Sylvester had to um, give his life for it. Mm. But I think this is the time that the revolution starts. And it begins with me and you, you know. Um, we shouldn't have to wait till someone dies, mm -hmm. you know. But we must act now. Parents have to start being more responsible with their children. The schools have to put systems in place that make bullying unacceptable on any count. But you know. my thing is that aren't there existing things in place? There are existing things in, in place, but it seems that there's a very kind of lax attitude. Yeah, they're not enforced. I mean, it's, like, it's just like the government in Nigeria. They're not right? There are laws against, you know, tr you know traffic. There are laws against tax. I mean, there are laws. But if it's not properly enforced, until someone starts to have, it's just the way we're designed as humans. Until there's punitive measures and there's actual enforcement and there's, you know, um, there's consequences mm -hmm. for those actions. Mm -hmm. People don't take them seriously. Well, this issue of bullying didn't start now, just like you said. When our parents were in school, I'm sure they experienced it. It's always a common uh, expectation that when you get into secondary school, they will tell you uh, when you get there, your seniors will ask you to sweep their, mm -hmm. their classroom or ask you to buy something and they won't give you money or they won't give you enough money and they, they demand more than what they give you. So they expect you to add your own money. All these things are... Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in secondary school, I myself, I experienced one. I think I was, what class was I then? I think I was in JS3 and yeah. there was this particular guy in SS3 that asked me to do something and I told him I was going to, uh, I was going somewhere, I was not too fine. The next thing I just, I got a slap on my face. Oh, and guess goodness. what, I, I went home, I told my mom, my mom followed me to school and reported to one soldier. And the moment the soldier asked for him because I went to a military school, this guy saw me later. I started apologizing, I had to apologize to my mom. So I had to not tell my mom that, okay, she let him go since he has apologized. And that since, ever since that time, he became my friend. The next time when he sees me, he just became my friend. But my point is, most people don't get lucky like myself. Uh, you know, um, students, they, they pass through these things like an expectation, like, like a common we mindset. Can, we, we need to change I can, I can understand that. I can, I can understand students. that there's a, a, a certain... Uh, protocol, right? There's certain hazing or, 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 or something that most school, just the nature of the younger ones. If I call it what it used to be in my boarding school in England, it was called the faggot system. That's mm -hmm. what it was called in our boarding school. Um, it wasn't a sexual thing, but that's what it was called. So the younger boys would be the servant of the older boys. They would take their laundry, tidy up the room, make their beds, all that kind of stuff. So you are assigned your, your senior. And you literally had to serve that senior. But is it really proper? That's the question. It so isn't. It isn't. It, it isn't. It's not proper. But, I think it's it's white, but it seems like a natural thing that happens. My issue is that it isn't Lord of the Flies because they're not abandoned alone on some desert island. There are adults there. There are people who are in charge. And you cannot tell me that absolutely no one, no one knew what was going on or knows the environment that exists in that school. The problem is with that, regarding that school is that it's a wealthy school. Hmm. So the people who attend there have money. And that means that one, the school um, wants to make sure to be taking that money. And two, that they will adhere and bend to the will of those parents, but rather than what is right. Sorry, any go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm fiery today. No, I think, I mean, I understand what you're saying, but I'm also trying to be conscious of the fact that, yes, this one school may be the one that is in the spotlight today, mm -hmm. but it's a crisis. It's a crisis across the board. So is it just about the fact that the schools are, like, looking to take the money, or even parents are complicit or even where do we draw the line because as we've all said from different experiences i mean everybody experienced some sort of seniority mm -hmm. like you know mm -hmm. that kind of yep. and there's a rite of passage mm -hmm. sort of so to speak but isn't it is that so why because one of the things i kept on thinking was when you said enough is enough so what are we supposed to be doing next what are we pushing for? yes what exactly. are we actually fighting for exactly. yes. uh, what, what exactly is the next level for yeah, this uh, kind absolutely, of absolutely. Uh, before i, I say mm -hmm. what i think is next let's hear from something like 
Helen. Let's hear from Helen. Helen, are you there? Yes. Yes. Well, unfortunately, um, I never experienced bullying, and that's maybe because I was a kind of a bully myself. <laughs> but uh, you know, I went to I went to a military school, and whatever was a punishment was a punishment because one did something wrong. But the unfortunate thing we have here now is that it's not actually the seniors being the bullies; it's actually your mates bullying you. That's a whole new dimension. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine my classmates bullying me or beating me or whatever the case may be. So I think we really need to look at this thing critically and find out where is it actually coming from? Why are these children becoming mini monsters? What is responsible for this mini monster um, facade? And look at it deeper and not look at it from the point of is the senior that is doing the bullying or the teacher doing the bullying let's look at it from the classmate point of view what gives the classmate the audacity to bully his um his his fellow um colleague or fellow classmate to the extent that he has a mind to commit murder yeah. Okay, so I think that kind of, yeah, I, I, I really like the angle mm -hmm, that Helen mm -hmm. has taken it from. I think that at this point in time, with what Toya has raised as her advocacy, but let's, I mean, the audacity is so one of the things that I have seen when it comes to children, and I'm not a child care expert. <laughs> I, the only part I can talk about with this is that, I mean, I'm a certified children's etiquette coach. I want to interest, when I was doing my certification, there was an area on bullying, and I found it interesting at first. I was like, why bullying? You know, but then I, now that things are coming out, I realize that issues around self-esteem, mm -hmm. peer pressure, what makes it, and then when there's the quote that said, oh, it's not about the, it's not about the victim, yeah. but the person who is bullied. So what gives another child the audacity to look at and his pair or her pair and say i want to put you down is where at that point in time the duty of care within the education system where you have adults who are supposed to regulate how interaction goes on amongst children and i think that is where the failure is happening in this particular case as regards this particular have case. they even have the training to identify such thing a thorough training to identify such things because literally the schools are doing anything they want that's a problem the, you that cannot you can you cannot leave the the per perpetrator to regulate themselves yeah, and that is what parents actually so, have and you know what i mean so, so, so i think that yes i think for, it starts from the parents Yes, we're getting into your portion. Into your portion. Yeah, let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah, because we're going to start entering uh, everybody else's territory. Yes. 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 Yeah, but, I mean, but I mean, you're talking about rules and so I mean, I'm saying there are rules already in place in those schools. I mean, it's, bullying is not, is not if it's not acceptable, it's not. If you have to put that's signs it. everywhere, if you have to hold weekly mm -hmm. sessions to that's remind, it. because that's I mean, children, you can regulate. I mean, children can be programmed. So intention, yes, matters. Yes, absolutely. After the break, Helen is next. After the break. Stay with us. Bullying, responsibility of the parent and the school. Bullying is the use of force, coercion, harmful teasing, threats, and abuse that is always dominated on the individual. There are many warning signs that are indicated that someone is affected by bullying, either being bullied or bullies themselves. Recognizing the warning signs is an important first step in taking action against bullying. Not all children who are bullied or who are being bullied ask for help. A child has a right to be educated in a clean, safe environment without any obstacles that are going to be obstructive to learning. The school has a duty of care to provide it and the parents have a duty of care to pay for the services that the school is actually rendering. First, let's examine what makes bullying such a trend? Why, why are children indulging in it? Most students that are actually enjoy bullying are actually a product of a bullying environment. It is important to understand that your environment makes 90% of your character. And when you're subjected to bullying in that environment, the tendency is that you will continue in another environment. Those are just statistics. It doesn't mean it actually applies in all cases. There are certain things that parents don't consider as bullying, 
and they consider it as their child standing up for their rights. So we have to look at critically, what do we understand by bullying in each and every, in each and every environment as well as in each culture? What is the way forward? It should be no tolerance, no tolerance, zero tolerance. No child should be subjected to bullying. And we really do need to stand up and make sure that that is the case. Where's the research that there's been bullying, especially in Nigerian schools? We hardly have any cases because most parents or most children don't come out and say they're being bullied because they're still in the target environment. What does the constitution have? What does the constitution say? And it is clear that the constitution says that a child has the right to be educated and that education should be quality education. But however, our public schools and federal schools have let us down. We are seeking respite in private schools. The act of collecting school fees, um, acceptance fees, and all ridiculous penalties have driven the issue of no accountability of private schools to the government. We can't do it alone, def definitely, but we can do it together. And we don't have to wait for another child to die. And we don't have to wait to know that these children have the rights under our constitution. In my opinion, we have let these children down as citizens of Nigeria, but more so, the government has also let them down. We can look at the, noble, the notable case of the Chibok girls. What's happened? We don't know. But Sylvester now has come, and this is the situation we find ourselves. Most schools have not been monitored since inception. And in every state, there is a Department of Quality and Assurance who are supposed to monitor schools, but most of them have not had that inspection since they had inaugurated their schools years ago. What are we saying now? The monitoring team in the ministry, they've all become elephants in the room. I think um, um, very interesting very well said. comments, I mean, by Helen. But I really think that one of the things that's going on here is a case of when, you know, you build high walls and fences to mm -hmm. protect yourself mm -hmm. against intruders and then you don't care about what is the actual cause and eventually your walls get climbed upon by those people outside you. I remember many years ago while doing a lot of advocacy around issues in Lagos State and I went to the office of the then Attorney General and he said one thing, he said that He's very, very worried. This was almost about the about what's going to happen in Lagos over the next couple of years, and because those things are so. What is happening here, which is what Helen is pointing out, we have had all those schools. We've all left the public school system because mm -hmm. we felt they were not good enough. But I did it many times. I've been cries from different angles for all of us to actually put an eye and ask questions as to mm -hmm. what exactly is going on in there. Who's advocating for teacher training? Who's pushing for standards? Mm -hmm. And so now the private schools that we all ran to and paid through our nostrils mm -hmm. and felt that they were good are now letting us down. So maybe really, you know, as Helen's advocacy say, responsibility of parents and schools. Being your parents who have children in schools, responsibility of adults to say we want the education system to actually be looked into. We want to call on the Ministry of Education across all the states. What are the standards? What are the monitoring boards? And like when Helen said about uh, QRM evaluation, monitoring evaluation, I think that, I mean, I may have a slight... I don't know because I have worked in the education space for a bit. And interestingly, yes, it does go early after a while, but they do come to the schools. And one of the challenges that school owners have is that, of course, when they finally come, there's a lot of their other requests that come into play. Mm. And so you literally can do the Nigerian mm. angle and get away with some things. Exactly. Which, 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 yeah. so, uh, so, which is what I was going to say. Again. Yeah, that someone needs to monitor the monitor. 
<laughs> that's what that's that diversity. Is, 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 unfortunately, is, someone needs to monitor the monitor. Exactly. Because if you think you don't about think it, it can cause direct death, but indirectly it causes mm-hmm. death. Because yes. somebody is not doing what you think you actually ought to right, do. The truth is, like I said, there are laws in place. There are rules. Mm-hmm. There are. If you look at the system, there's actually a system in place. There is. Who is enforcing it? Mm-hmm. And Nobody. then who is making sure that the enforcer is enforcing it? True. So it's levels and levels of irresponsibility Across and indiscipline and corruption yeah. that is just. You need to enforce yes. the enforcer to yeah. enforce the rules. Absolutely. Rule. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah. what, what is, what is our solution? We know we have to regulate. We know we have to monitor. How? Because right, me, I'm ready with placard to start bombarding. Yes. 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 I think we need to start. But then, but really, I don't know, know, really know, how, know how much that is going to do. No, you see, uh, we need uh, to start holding accountable. So we need, first of all, there's, need to, there's the need for research. What is supposed mm-hmm. to obtain? Who's responsible for what? Then there's that need to ask, okay, where does the box stop? Mm-hmm. And then when you now start going, okay, say what? Look, you know that in the, any system in a society, you have the three tiers of government, you have the media, you have civil society. Mm-hmm. And the reality is that those last two arms, the informal arms of government, the media and civil society, are fairly society. Because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you need galvanized organi- yeah, organized, organized movement. uh, movements. Mm-hmm. If they're going to have chaos, you're going to have riots and then don't then the government comes back again to say we're keeping the peace so yeah. you're going to have to say okay so this is where it is what are the things that they're supposed to enforce and how do we ensure mm-hmm. that this goes on because well, it saying, has to happen we have to start making demands we've said that we have to start demanding for accountability mm-hmm. right i believe in process as well mm-hmm. once yes. you i mean so that's how it starts it starts as an echo if you know it is a resounding mm-hmm. you know explosion that they can't yeah. stop but be accountable so to. i kind of see it three ways and i think mm-hmm. helen you you kind of touched on these things one is the actual physical movement mm-hmm. right yes. two is that you actually have to come up with sincere regulation yes something that actually works mm-hmm. and um I was on a podcast with our fellow advocate Kunle um, and Helen um, a couple of days ago and Kunle made a great point in that there are laws that exist but they are so vague That's you know important. to uphold the rights of a child what does that mean what are the human rights of it? it's so vague mm-hmm. that it's just left to a wide amount in interpretation so we also need the the lawmakers to go back and actually make laws that are enforceable before you can even no, enforce very clear yes well, helen would, would you well, want to give a last yeah. word before yeah, yeah. um I, I my thoughts really is the fact that um uh, how do i put this that it doesn't sound funny um, just, just go, say, just go it. say it <laughs> <laughs> we really at this point really need to have a physical action you know we've been having actions against government this government didn't do that nobody has really come out Mm -hmm. and stood the ground for education Mm -hmm. we Mm -hmm. need to come out at least maybe go to the governor in a group Mm -hmm. and let him know that we are tired of our children when i was in school if you were in a private school that means that you are so dull that you could not pass any federal <laughs> yeah, school. Exactly. Yeah. Sure that. That's, that's that's right. that was where we were. Mm-hmm. Now, private schools, whether you pass or you don't, you're in there. We need to go back. Mm-hmm. We really yeah, need to go back. And I, my personal opinion is that let us, for the first time ever, come together, march, march to the government office or uh, Ministry of Education, if not for anything, for the children who have died, mm-hmm. for the children who have died, yeah. and go there and let them know our hearts. And then we leave it like that. And then we continue on the bunks and burner and pushing like we're doing as it is now. Absolutely That's agree with you, Ellen. Absolutely agree with you. Thank you very Good way forward. That, so we have Elijah up, and it's a very, very interesting topic. So please stay with us after the break. educational and learning environments towards correcting the failed system. 
Educational facilities are supposed to not only equip children in cognitive development, but also behavioral development. However, some authorities have failed in their leadership responsibility to inculcate discipline in their words. Given recent ill-fated death of Sylvester Oronomi, a plethora of complaints have been filed on social media about the negligence of schools in monitoring the activities of their words and going as far as politicizing their system in favor of the fittest. On the other end of the spectrum, parents are also being blamed for not paying much attention to their children's development process, thereby unleashing both abuser and the victim in an unchecked and unforgiving system. However, these occurrences are avoidable only if some school authorities and parents can form a synergy to put this anomaly in check to prevent future fatalities through the following. The Parents-Teacher Association is an essential part of the learning process of a child, so it must not be eliminated. Unusual behaviors from students or pupils must be duly reported and addressed. Boarding school facilities must be structured with an intent to curb bullying and unacceptable behaviors. There must be school disciplinary and correctional committee for bullies and victims. Parents should not be negligent to their children or world. If these steps are put in place, the school system will be less of a torture zone and more of a learning and development environment. Let's ponder on these words by Katkura, a world-class author and chef. Bullying is killing our kids. Being different is killing our kids. And the kids who are bullying are dying inside. We have to save our kids, whether they are bullied or they are bullying. They are all in pain. Let us save our children from the menace of bullying. Rest in peace, Sylvester Aronomy and other victims of this evil. Yeah. I, don't but, yeah, know. I, I like, I like, I mean, it sounds nice when you say that um, both children are in pain. Unfortunately, only one set of children are dying. You know, more often than not. Um, so I understand the empathy and the understanding for the child that is bullying the perpetrator. Because most times, like we've said, the environment, like um, Helen said, has 90% to do mm -hmm. with, you know, child's mm -hmm. development or formation, you know, character, you know, you know, formation. I understand that. However, we must also understand that more often than not, while that child is you know, has issues. It's the child that's being bullied mm -hmm. that gets the wrong end of the stick more, more than not. That's a child that turns out sometimes a bigger bully mm -hmm. because they need to fight back. Sometimes that's a child that, ten, that turns up timid for the rest of their lives. Or dead. Or dead in some cases. Well, so, there's a case of the girl in the US, 12-year-old um, with autism, who committed suicide as a result of ongoing bullying. Yeah. She was being bullied so bad that she took her own life at the age of 12. Imagine that. What about the one that happened some months back in South Africa? A student killed herself because of bullying too. I don't mm -hmm. know that you follow that news. That yeah. was some months back in South mm -hmm. Africa. You see? See, yeah. I, I, I kind of think that, I mean, yes, I might try to take a slight outlier position, especially to Tolu's stance as to, yes, the bully, the bullied actually suffers some more. And yes, maybe apparently and obviously, the bullied may suffer some more. But then we do need to understand something that, in reality, when you start to delve deeper into behavioral patterns and working with children, every action has their psychological undertones to this. So, so you see, a person who is bullied, I'm not saying that, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not justifying because truly, I was not exactly a bully. I mean, I mean, are I, you I, sure? I, 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 I'm, I'm are you sure? You look sure. like a bully. I'm absolutely sure. No, I was just very. I was just one of those very. I was one of those very, was one of those very interesting. Well, you know, double personality. So I was mm -hmm. assertive, yet I was also very timid. Yeah. So I'm timid, and I stay in my space. But you tug at, you push at me, I kind of assert myself. So I feel that we need to realize and deeply focus on the fact that there's a valid, salient point that Elijah is raising. Mm -hmm. The bullied and the bully. But that brings me to something that somebody said when this conversation was going on. And that in a lot of schools, most schools have just, if you look at it, like 
one counselor. In fact, mm. the guidance and counseling system yes. in school mm. is even almost moribund. Most schools look at you know, intentionality is the last leg of this conversation. In fact, most schools focus on teacher certification, education, the principal, and things like that. Mm. But let's look at a step, taking this one step back when he was talking and we we're talking. I remember that a lot of our parents, or at least two generations mm -hmm. and the immediate past generation, had parents who. Whether or not we look at parenting, we talk about parenting. Parent, intentional parenting is really important. But a lot of people that seem to have turned out okay in terms of they built a life, mm -hmm. where the school was really like, you know, where you had people who were in the system and they were saying, okay, you know what, this person is being sent to school and this was going on. So I feel that in this case, when Elijah was talking about how do you correct a failed system? Mm -hmm. The system is filled, right? Now we're talking mm -hmm. about the educational system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in this situation here, little things like when they spoke about it, what kind of the on the guarding of it, that behavior, those, those issues. It's a behavior. Now, yeah. What, what, at, what, what is the cause? What is the cause of, that of it? How do you deal with it? So okay. we have someone yes. here called Helen, yes. who is an advocate. Helen. And there's something <laughs> that happens, there's 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 applied behavioral analysis in um, the special needs um you know when we're do thinking about special needs and you are working on behaviors of children and you try and find the cause of the root behavior aba abc mm -hmm. you know what happened before that behavior so you, mm -hmm. you immediately are looking for the root cause mm -hmm. the behavior that happened and then the consequence of that behavior mm -hmm. now we're dealing with the consequences of all these things mm -hmm. and we haven't dealt with the antecedent what is, we, the, what is the root cause mm -hmm. so Standard i think i think helen is is is, okay. is a really good one to just let's get her opinion on Yes. Uh, well, I guess now I'm talking from the point of a behavior analyst. So uh, yes, you have the antecedents, you have the behavior, you have the behavior. consequence. We are dealing with the consequence. That's what we seem to be doing here. But we need to look at what happened before. But as you were, you know, as you guys, as Elijah was talking, I said to myself, we have so many social workers who are redundant. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have so many counselors. Who are redundant? Mm -hmm. Why can't we have a system that every school mm, that's it. must have mm -hmm. one social worker Those are the challenges. and one guiding and counselor? Mm -hmm. And it will be done according to the population of the school. So mm -hmm. if your school is, yep. um, you have 1,000 children in your school, you would have at least two or three to service these children. This is what I feel should be the immediate stop gap. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to take a while mm -hmm. for us to get to where we're going. But as you rightfully said, those um, disciplines are totally non-existent in most of the schools. Why can't they? Why can't we advocate for them to come back? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. So well, yeah. I'm going to tell you one, Helen. Yeah. Those that yes, those that are that think they are guardian and counselors needed to be guided and counselled. Those that teach needed to be taught. Mm -hmm. When I was in secondary school, I told you I went to a military school. That's why we had the soldiers. To instill discipline in us and sometimes punish us via the normal military means even lock you up in that room if need be mm -hmm. we had guidance and counseling most of the guy g and c were mostly women matured women mm -hmm. when i mean mature, i'm not talking of young teachers i mean women in their yeah. 50s yeah, times, when you yes. meet them like mommies they will mm -hmm. sit down with you like my son or my daughter they will advise you you know when i go to when i was in gs3 having passed through some nasty nonsense in school when I got to SS1, SS2, mm -hmm. and eventually I became a prefect, I remember I had a meeting with other prefects like myself. We said, this is our regime, will be different. We are not going to punish junior students. GS1 to GS3, we feel they are too small. We don't punish them. Mm. If you do wrong from SS1 to SS3, you'll be punished. So that idea of asking, hey, you, come and sweep our class, we don't do that. In fact, if any of our classmates does that, we disappoint. they don't like us for that. Like, but others said before us did it now. Why is your own case Why different? We said, no, ours will be different. <laughs> we like discipline, but not to beat or mm -hmm. punish innocent children. That's mm -hmm. what I was thinking. Yeah, so I, so, I, get, and, and I understand that because sometimes, again, unless you can empathize with the, what mm -hmm. someone is going through, no matter how many degrees or certifications you have, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just education. Mm -hmm. Sometimes all you need is just empathy. Mm -hmm. Being able to understand what this person has been through. I mean, I'm, for a long time I was a bully. For natural reasons. I have four older brothers. Mm -hmm. Right? I was bullied all my life, more or less. But not so is the hurtful teaser. Did you say you but were? But they knew. Well, not like all my life. Where? Thank God. I, where? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm, exactly I'm, so, at my age, I'm still bullied by my older brothers. Because they're I mean, they're way older than me. So you get those things, they still bully you. But what it does for you sometimes is it toughens you up. Right, but in some other cases, you know, the negative, yeah. you know, uh, consequences of that, and you have to now personally check yourself mm -hmm. and see the tendencies mm -hmm. that you have. 
and then like you said go to the root cause and say where did this thing come from and then start to address those things well thank you very much everyone the question of the child rights plagues a lot of nigerians and it breaks it down after the break okay so my question today is does the child have any rights and obviously it's clear that i have a passion for children in a very funny way that is different from a lot of people here but i will start with what the unicef website has to say your child has a right to a safe nurturing school environment that respects their dignity i'm particularly talking about the rights of the child today because questions around do, what child rights have come up a lot and maybe parents and schools are not even fully aware of the rights that are clearly enunciated that all children have. The Convention on the Rights of the Child states that all children have the right to an education and protection from all forms of physical or mental violence, injury or abuse. And interestingly, bullying is no exception. Although designed for the safety and protection of children have to be provided for by adults and the government making a clear responsibility lie on the parents, the school, as well as the government. Although children and young people are covered under the Human Rights Act 1998, their rights are more clearly specified under the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, known as the UNCRC. Now, people usually ask the question, how do those, those kind of conventions play out in Nigeria? Nigeria has ratified most of these international treaties, and once you have ratified the treaty, it's applicable in your country. Although neither specifically mentions bullying, bullying behavior does breach a number of the articles in both. So I'm saying, alongside this, both outline the responsibilities of adults to protect and safeguard children and young people from bullying behavior. The United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child states it has 54 articles setting standards in healthcare, education, and legal, civil, and social services, which cover four broad areas. And these areas are survival rights, development rights, protection rights, participation rights. And what is a right? A right is simply a basic need. It's not an entitlement or an expectation. It's a, it's a basic need that is expected. Children need to be protected from bullying behavior so that they can survive, so they can develop and participate in a fulfilling life. And therefore, we're declaring today that bullying is a breach of children's rights. So, how do we showcase this? Apart from the other rights stated, we also have survival rights. What are survival rights? That's the right to survive and develop healthily. The impact of bullying behavior must be addressed in a way that meets the needs of those young people affected and involved. And once again, I say that adults share a responsibility to address any behavior that can harm the development of children. We need, what do you need to be happy and healthy? The positive impact of healthy relationships, supportive role models, inclusion, love and respect. And all these are things that can be undermined by bullying behavior. So what is it that society, we all need to do? And what are we advocating for today? We need to teach our children how to value and promote a healthy sense of respect for themselves and others in order to reduce the risk of bullying behavior. One other right that children also have is development rights. They have the right to relax and play. An excluded child by bullying behavior has a harmful impact on development, on their health and well-being. Once again, as adults, remember that rights of children can only be upheld by adults within them. We are responsible for shaping an inclusive culture where children, all children can participate. Bullying and its impact can be detrimental to a child's capacity to learn, and this right also highlights an adult's responsibility to take young people's views into account when making decisions that affect them. A child's right to education can be denied if they refuse to attend or are removed from school because of bullying behavior. Staff and parents have a responsibility to change behavior that is making a child feel unsafe. It's upon us to develop, our, to develop children's talents fully. The impact of bullying on self-esteem and aspirations can prevent young people from reaching their full potential. Children need to be heard, and they have a right to be heard. And so it's time today to call on all adults 
and more especially parents and adults with the duty of custody over children to listen to them and uphold their fundamental rights. And I think that maybe we have found those points and ways that we're going to use for advocacy mm -hmm. with the Lagos State Government as suggested by Helen and the other advocates here. And we have a point. How many points are agenda to work? Uh, we have <laughs> agenda. <laughs> what a lecture indeed. What a lecture indeed. So, no, that, there was something she said that caught my interest. It's all about value system. You know, I've said this thing before, enforcing the right values. It's charity begins from the home. Mm -hmm. The person being bullied most time, no, the person be, the person bullying, the bully most times the product of his home. Mm -hmm. Go and check out their home. Many of these children, perhaps from broken home or from home where their parents don't pay attention to them or don't show good example or see how their parents talk down on housemaid or whatever, and they grow up with this attitude. And when they get to school, they feel it's okay to inflict pain and look superior to other students. So it all boils down to values. We have to be careful about what we do around our children. Yes, children while I agree with that, and I think it's really true, I still think that there's a part that is usually under underemphasized. The fact that when you talk to people over time, people always say they feel unheard. People really don't. So we, when we're growing up, it was constant. Children are seen and not heard. heard and yeah. so when people say, when the kind of classifications you put about where, how people that turn out to be bullies, some of the people that are bullies or that, were bull that bullied us or that grew, grew up in regular good homes, mm -hmm. sometimes not, being, not knowing or knowing how to behave, not knowing social skills, because some people don't even realize the imp that I'm bullying you. Just feel that, like there was an advocate that mentioned, that said, well, it was Helen that said, so parents see it as a child standing up for himself. <laughs> and then, so we mean, mean the education, the reorientation is deep. Yeah. Really. And yeah. I'm glad there's a behavioral yeah. analyst yeah. over yes, here. Behavior is yeah. important. It's it's important. Deep. So the thing, the thing about rights that you've said, I mean, what caught my attention is the fact that if Nigeria has ratified these rights, then why aren't we enforcing them? So Look, the fact that policemen can go into a school yeah. and with live ammunition and just start I shooting like students. Awesome. Yeah. So uh, I mean that that's all we all we need to say. rights are trampled on on this part of the of world. Course. So at some point we need to be start advocating for people's rights yes. to be upheld. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see because if you just go by just the rights that people humans have, you know that alone would set a lot of mm -hmm. boundaries and a lot of you know standards in place. All right, Helen, I'm sure um I would just bring it to your notice that do you know that there is actually a psychometric test that is used in the UK currently to determine the bully and the bullier. Wow. Please, we need it. I, <laughs> yes. I, well, like you know, to, I, remember, I remember when I was trying to, there's a particular school in GRA that is quite known for mm. the students being bullies. And um, I, they, they called me in and I spoke to the, you know, the, the counselor and said, look, you know what, we can solve this problem you can just administer this particular test. Oh yes, great! Wow, ooh, ooh, ooh! And within the next, you know, the next time, oh, we don't think we should administer it. It's very sensitive at the moment. Blah blah yeah. blah, and this and that. So that died, and it died because the parents were not yeah. ready to accept. Yeah, if yeah. the results came out, if my child is the bullier. Mm. <laughs> How am I going to take it? Mm -hmm. They were not looking at it from the point of this can help your system. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, the problem is that I, I'm not saying that schools are not doing the right thing. Some of them are really doing wonderful things. Sometimes it's actually the parents yes. that make a lot of these schools do what they do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know yeah. that some schools, they want the best for the children. They do health checks. They do yeah. this. These are the same parents in their school yeah. that will go and petition them mm -hmm. for doing the right thing for their children. So I know that this whole Sylvester thing has become a very, very big issue. But what I also don't want us to do is I don't want us to lump all the schools in the same category that we're lumping doing college because there are some schools that are actually doing a lot. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, I agree with you. You know, I and think you know, there's something that about, we can do yeah. in terms of, you know, when we're petitioning, when we're going forward, it has to take parents' involvement, school involvement, mm -hmm. government involvement. Mm -hmm. But Helen's hit something where if we can identify the schools that are doing it right, 
we can learn from how they're doing it, right, mm -hmm. and apply it um, on a wider, across board, yeah. yes, across, so, so, so across like board. So yeah. if there are people already in this space doing it right, yeah. then let's learn let's from learn them. Learn from them, yeah. Which is what, you know, I was going to say about Helen that, you know, is that thing they say about he'll pay the piper and dictates the tune. Mm -hmm. That's it. So until schools are ready to say, no. We do not mm -hmm. accept this kind of behavior. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Please take your children away. Exactly. Until schools are able yeah. to make that stand. That's it. This thing will not stop. That's it. You know. The so you have to look beyond the school fees, yes. right? And say Ooh. that this is our, That's this is our it. standard. They are profit yeah. oriented. Yeah. No, so no, so you not all of things them. are not yes. going to change Most, yes. if the educational system, the owners of the system yeah. say no. Yes. And then that also now brings to the fact that, okay, how do you actually diversify your offering such a way that parents don't hold you to ransom their children? How do you push the education system? Them. Anyway, yeah. um, Tolu wraps the conversation up after the break. Charity begins at home. Justice begins next door. Charity has left the home. She left the home when you decided that the critical task of raising your child to be a decent human is someone else's responsibility. Charity has left the home because we are now raising children without discipline, without instruction, without direction, without boundaries, and ultimately without a conscience. Charity left, Charity left the home the day you chose that meeting, that appointment, that event, that friend, that seemingly urgent deadline over your child, and on that day you excused bad behavior for, oh, he's just a child, oh yes, he is a child, and yes, badly behaved children become badly behaved adults. Badly behaved parents, listen, badly behaved children, more often than not, are the ones who become criminals, drug addicts, rapists, and murderers. So think about it next time you make an excuse for that child, and say, oh, he's just a child. Child on child crime and abuse has carried over the past 20 years, to as much as half the percentage of adult crime. Let me put that in context for you. For every two adults and there's a criminal, there is one juvenile child. I shudder at where that statistic will be in another 20 years if we do not take drastic actions starting today. I can see here my parents' words as early as I remember saying, remember the son of whom you are. That phrase, as simple as it was, carried weight. It carried weight because they were not just referring to themselves as parents. By saying those words, they were opening a whole visa of instruction, discipline, direction, and yes, home training. I mean, it's called home training for a reason. Many parents today look at their children in the eye. Many, sorry, let me say that again. Many parents today cannot look at their children in the eye and say, remember the child of who you are, because there is nothing to remember. They haven't done the hard work. Many children today are bad boys and bad girls and are celebrated for it. We must start to reprogram our kids to respect plain old decency in a world where good, bad, moral, and immoral have been heavily subjectivized. Without taking a responsibility away from schools, the task of raising a decent human is the primary responsibility of the parents. I repeat, the critical task of raising a decent and responsible human is the primary responsibility of the parent. Because if you don't raise your children right, somebody else will. In some cases, that's a word in a prison facility or other inmates. Social security is what I advocate for. Criminal negligence must be truly criminalized. Parents must be held fully responsible for neglecting their roles. And let's bring charity back home. At that point, just drop the mic and walk. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I, I don't know. I really, I really think that what you have said is so true. You've hit the nail on the head. And the question that comes to mind immediately is that, where did we get it we get wrong? It wrong? What is like happening where, in the home? Where, where did it all go, go wrong? Awry? At what and point? I yes, yeah. and I really think that maybe when we look at it, when you see the situation, is when the crush, you know, the desire for the final things of life mm -hmm. and how I don't want my children to suffer the way I suffered yeah. and how I want to give them a good life, yeah. all that started becoming the norm. But because when you talk to some parents and you're trying to tell them that, Oh, this doesn't make sense, or this shouldn't have done. I look at you like, what are you talking about? I remember, you know, I mean, there was a time when I was in love etiquette classes, and at some point, when every time we say, we always get that sense of, 
Oh, really? Hey, do they really need it? Okay, maybe they need to learn how to use their fork and knife. And I'm thinking, do you think that etiquette about fork and knife alone really was talking about behavior, social yeah. skills? And so, do we, the parents even think it's that important? Yeah. So, let me, so let, me, let me tell you something. So, I left Nigeria at six years old. I went to boarding school at the age of six to the age of 18. Um, my parents never relocated. They were here. I can tell you every day of boarding school, my father was in my head. Hmm. He had done that walk mm. that's, that's, that's at six years at old. At six years old. That's it. To this day, the man is still inside my mm. head. <laughs> so it's really important in those initial, we call it the early intervention years in the yeah. special needs community, those first six years, especially those first two to three, that you really impress the values on children because that is the time the brain is the most spongiest to understand, to absorb, and to be able to become part of their DNA. So it's really, really important that parents clue into this. You yeah. cannot leave your child for the nanny. Yes, absolutely. You know? what, what I'm going to say is I was just thinking about something. You, you call it Rema. It came to my mind. <laughs> <laughs> there are two things here. Parents should think about the future of their children. What kind of child do you want your, your what kind of adult do you want your child, child. to grow into? Mm -hmm. If you go to the uh, if you go to America, George Bush, George H. W. Bush, better George W. Bush. Do you know the amount of work he impacted in the life of his children that he had one of his son, a governor and a president, another one a governor, right? Yeah, senator. Yeah. Do you think it was just because he was a president, that's why they became yeah, president? Random. No. That was intentional parenting. Mm -hmm. And then the other aspect from of uh, uh away from parents in the school those that go into education i want to be a teacher many a times they don't go for the glory of teaching and impacting life mm -hmm. they go because of oh that's the work available i just want to do it i don't care my own is just to collect my money and leave Please. anything they ask me to do, I don't do. we need helen to talk you hit uh, yes. you hit an issue and i know <laughs> yeah. helen will be helen. sitting there wanting to say something particular on this point helen, yes in fact i think I love all of you, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> we love you too. You're all speaking my language. You know, I think it, it's really, really, really... Um, I'm always one for charity begins at home. And I, and I concur with Tonya because I also went to school in the UK. And every time I wanted to make a wrong move, I would just remember my father. My father would tell me that he would kill me first before I, I would disgrace his family. That was his words. Do you understand? So I sit down in my quiet moment and I'm thinking the parents of these young boys who have now been identified as the suspects of killing this young man, what would those parents be going through? You see, it's a tragedy all round. Yeah. It's a tragedy all round. Absolutely. And I'm very, very sure that if you look at it holistically, we have to mourn for both parties. Yeah. Sylvester's parents have lost a child, and five to six other parents are more or less going to lose their children as well. Yeah. But it's Tolu, a very bad time. Yeah. Helen, Tolu, Tolu hit on something towards the end of his intro, which kind of hinted at, do you prosecute the parents? Like, I kind of got that yes. thing in terms of this, the, the ramifications yes. for the I mean, parents. Like social security abroad. You know? I mean, if you're a badly behaved parent, they take your children from you. Well, in Nigeria, that might, be, that, might, that might be in Nigeria. That might be a bit of a relief for them. Like, you know, just take them. You know what I mean? Well, I don't think seriously, so. I don't think so. seriously, we should probably have those kind of things in place. So, um, I think this is a good time to have a moment of silence for, you know, the daily departed children over, you know, the last couple of years or whenever that's, you know, um, having victims of, you know, bullying or physical abuse. And may their souls rest in perfect peace. Amen. Amen. Well, time is never our friend on this program. However, the advocacy, the advocacy continues on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, and on Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com slash the Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Like Catherine Jenkins said, 
Children should be able to live a life free from bullying and harassment. And it's time that we all took a stand against this. Till next week, same time, on this same station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Yes, Bye. indeed.